Congressman Robert Garcia of California, president of the Democratic freshman class. Welcome in, Congressman. Thank you for being with us. Uh, I'd like to get your reaction on what we saw on the House floor there, especially with these concessions that McCarthy had to make to win the speaker's gavel. I mean, it was really insane last night. Obviously, uh, we've been here all week just waiting to get uh, sworn in. So it was been, uh, it's been a crazy week. Uh, and certainly last night was no different. I mean, obviously, uh, Kevin McCarthy has essentially given away all of his power uh, to the far right in his party. It's, it's, it's really crazy that he has essentially uh, handed over the keys to the Republican Party to Matt Gates and Lowen Boebert. And so for us, as freshmen coming in, we were there getting, getting ready to swore, get sworn in. Uh, obviously, we were been ready from day one to get to work for the American people uh, to work on so many important issues. But now what we have essentially is an ineffective speaker who is going to be governing an ineffective, very, very slim majority. And so Democrats are united behind Hakeem Jeffries. Uh, and it's just it's just been you know, a really real wild week for all of us. So let's talk about one of these concessions, uh, one on the border security issue with McCarthy pledging action here uh, from holding hearings at the border itself to passing bills. What do you expect them to be pushing here and what do you expect Democrats to be able to fight back on? I mean, well, first, I mean, McCarthy and the Republicans are now really giving the, the car keys to the, to the, to the far-right MAGA Republicans in, in the party. I really have no plan. And so when it comes to issues around immigration or the border or helping working families, and we've seen in this last election that they really have no solutions. Uh, they're going to spend all their time attacking the administration. They're going to spend all their time uh, really catering to the fringe uh, of, the, uh, of the party that really have no sort of uh, governing philosophy. And so th that's been clear before. It was clear even in some of his remarks last night. And Democrats are completely united to really take it to the Republicans every single day. And so we're going to be putting forward our own ideas around immigration, around the economy, around helping working families. And we're going to have a united message for these next two years. Our plan is to win the majority back in 2024. And so if Kevin McCarthy even makes it uh, two years, uh, I'll be surprised. But either way, we're going to win back the gavel in two years. Oh, boy, it's going to be a wild two years. That is for sure. Um, I want to read a tweet that you put out last night as well. Quote, we just got sworn in and for the first time, in history, there is an LGBTQ plus immigrant in the U.S. Congress. Now, we talked a little bit about immigration. So but when it comes to LGBTQ plus rights, how can Democrats counter uh, not only GOP rhetoric, but any actions they may take with their slim majority? I mean, listen, at first, it's very it's very clear that uh, Republicans have been focused on attacking LGBTQ plus people uh, over these last few years. Uh, they are trying to take our country backwards uh, every single time they can put down uh, the LGBTQ plus community. They do it the way that they're attract, uh, attacking trans people across this country. The way they're they're attacking our community is serious. It's something that we are taking uh, very seriously. And I know that those of us that are uh, LGBTQ within the Congress are going to fight back on this every single day. For myself, uh, you know, being the first member of Congress that's both an immigrant that that is gay. Uh, that's something I take very seriously for both communities. I plan to be a voice for those. Uh, but we've got to, all of us as Democrats call all of that out. They, they want to take this country back. And when you're empowering people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is literally attacking uh, the community uh, every single day online and through her speeches, that's something that we should take seriously. They don't want a party. Uh, they don't want a country that is diverse. They don't want a community that uplifts people. They want to divide. Uh, and, and they're not going to do that in this Congress. We're going to fight them every day. I have a, a question for you, Congressman. Of course, one of the concessions that McCarthy had to make was to bring down the motion to vacate just down to one vote. So if he was able to give um, the never Kevins that, can Democrats actually use that to their benefit and use that to challenge uh, McCarthy's leadership? And if so, will they? At the end of the day, I think all of us are really focused on uh, supporting our leader. We're, we're, gonna, we're, tr we're tr entrusting that Hakeem Jeffries uh, knows exactly what he's doing every single day and the team we have with Catherine Clark and Pete Aguilar. So uh, they, they're going to lay out a game plan for us early on. Certainly as freshmen, we are, we are there to, to support that work. Um, but I, I'm, I'm going to be surprised if Republicans immediately don't start challenging uh, Kevin McCarthy on, on this rule. We don't, we're going to have a rules package in front of us on Monday. Whether it passes or not is yet to be seen. We have yet to see exactly what is in the entire package. So that's something that we're going to be looking at over the weekend and in the days ahead. Um, but he clearly has a very slim majority. He has become he is essentially coming into power as the weakest speaker in modern history. He, he has no ability to control his caucus. You saw that with the amount of votes that we went through. Uh, you saw that with the way the far extreme right is actually controlling the actual process and the narrative. Uh, and so we're, we're united uh, through um, and with Hakeem Jeffries. And as freshmen, the 34 of us are ready to get to work.
Okay, so you were elected freshman class president by your Democratic peers. It does sound a little bit like a high school title for anybody who's not familiar with the process, <laughs> but you were actually an important liaison between your fellow freshmen and leadership. You talked a little bit about some of your priorities. What are some of the other priorities you have while in this position? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, a, a, a pleasure to serve. Uh, we have a great group of 34 uh, freshmen House Democrats. Uh, first and foremost, our job is to take it to the Republicans every single day and deliver back for our communities. We grew up from across the country. We want to make sure that, that these 34 freshmen, that we get uh, great committees, that we're uh, really focused on it, making sure that we are a voice of the next generation. We've got folks in within our class that represent and are making historic first all across the country in every single way. And so we believe we're a, a new voice for the Democratic Party, one that's progressive, uh, one that is uh, moved, wants, wants to move this country forward and uplift all people. And a priority personally for me and for the class is we want to make sure that the 34 of us get reelected in two years so that we can actually win back the House majority. Winning back the House majority in two years is absolutely job number one so that we can actually get bills in front of the president's desk, get immigration reform done, protect LGBTQ plus rights, bring back more, more resources for working families. That's what we as freshmen want to do all across the country. Of course, we still have a lot to learn, a lot, a lot to support with the, within our House leadership, uh, but it's an honor to serve and, and represent them. Uh, and certainly we all look forward to starting back on Monday and getting to work right away. Yeah, a lot of work to be done. Rolling up your sleeves, getting started. Um, real quick before we let you go, Congressman, this is pretty cool. You said you'd be sworn in with a constitution that also included a photo of your parents who tragically you lost to COVID, your citizenship certificate, and an original Superman comic underneath. Talk to me about why these items were so important to you. And were you able to do that last night? Uh, absolutely. I, mean, I think for uh, first, I for me, um, soaring on the on the U.S. Constitution is, is very important. Um, I, as an immigrant to this country, I, I I always tell people I love America. I'm so grateful the opportunity is given me uh, as an immigrant here in the United States. Uh, I lost my parents to COVID, um, and so those are other items that are important to me. I also grew up and learned reading and writing in in this in this country by reading comic books, and so uh, that's a very uh, personal uh, memento uh, from the from the Library of Congress. So all of us actually will have because of what happened. Uh, Last night, when we all got sworn in, essentially, uh, in, in, in uh, the early morning, uh, we will all have an additional swearing in ceremony, uh, likely, we hope, this week, that will include a bunch of mementos, um, constitutions, Bibles, whatever folks are bringing uh, that will likely happen this week or in the, in the coming days. So I look forward to that, uh, and it's going to be a special moment for all of us.